excuse me, I choked on my spit while I was breathing. <laughs> it happens to everybody. Usually not when you're trying to say hello live, but whatever, <laughs> that's life. Anyway, good morning. Welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. <laughs> I'm Kristen Omdahl, and we're here live in Southwest Florida in my raining backyard. I hope you can hear the rain. We have so many big trees back here, and so when it rains, you can hear the rain on the leaves, and hopefully you can hear it. If you can hear it, let me know. Hi, Grace and Lisa and Lily, Sean, Pamela. Hi, Judy. Hi, Rita. Hi, Thea. Hi, ba hi Becker Boo Boo. Come here, honey. Did you want to come say hi? Oh, we got a sucky kitty already. Hi, Grace and Thea, Pamela, Lisa. Joe, you can hear it. Yay. Who's a baby kitty? Hi, Edna. Hi, Marsha. Uh, you're going to want to go down and chase your brother in a second. Here comes baby Bjorn. Hi, Angela. You want to see a nice big fluffy belly? Oh, there's a nice belly. Oh, we match today. Look at that. Becker and I are twins today. <laughs> hi, Barbara. Hi, Gerilyn. I'm sure he really cares, doesn't he? He cares about treats. He cares about being brushed. He cares about playing, but he does not care if my shirt matches his fur. <laughs> That's more of a me issue. Hi, Kathy and Mariana and Donna, Christine, Gerilyn. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Barbara. Thank you, Judy. Judy's sharing my blouse for you. Uh, this is um, a leopard print sheer blouse that I found on Amazon that I absolutely love. You know the white floral one that I have been wearing? I found it in black and I've ordered it, so I should have that soon too. I'm in the mood to have black sheer blouses right now. I don't know. I gotta start working on more things too. Now that I'm done making the projects for the 24 crochet hat book, I can start making other things, including I have some progress on my Tunisian uh, vertical striped cardigan that I'm working on. And I wanted to show you something else this morning that is a major Amazon find in my opinion, and that's the robe that I was wearing in the beauty vlog this morning. If you watched it, fine. If you didn't watch it, that's fine too. But it is available in my Amazon shop and it comes in lots of prints if you don't like this particular color. But I have to say, I really like the fabric. I wasn't sure if I was going to like the fabric or not. It's a very long robe. Like, I'm 5'9", it comes between my calf and my ankle. It has pockets that don't add bulk to it. I was in a rush this morning, so I didn't weave the sash through the belt loops on the sides, but I will later. It has the interior uh, string tie so that you can make it more secure as well. It has a little bit of a wide sleeve, but it's not all the way long. So it, I find that you either need the sleeve to fit you properly and be long or be wide like this and be shorter. If these are long and wide, I get stuck on doorknobs. Seriously, like I'm kind of klutzy and I move way too fast for my own good. And so for me, this length is going to be safe for that wide of a sleeve. If you're klutzy, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Anyway, um, it comes in lots of prints, but this was the original print that showed up on the listing. It has butterflies, it has birds, and it has these beautiful pink cherry blossoms on a gorgeous uh, like mottled green background. It's absolutely stunning. I think it's prettier in person than I even anticipated. And like I said, the fabric is nicer than I, than I anticipated too. So I am super happy with it. And I think I would be proud to give it as a gift as well. It's really, really nice for the price. Okay, so that's all I wanted to say about that. I wasn't going to wear it this morning, but I did want to mention it because I feel like it's my new favorite find. <laughs> The fabric's great, yes. The print is great, the fabric's great. Uh, Trisha gets stuck on doorknobs and she doesn't wear bracelets. That's a good tip, yes. Thank you, Barbara, I love the robe. Um, any, I don't know if any of you follow Chrissy Teigen. She's the uh, a former supermodel and she's also the wife of John Legend. I enjoy following her on Instagram because she's very silly. Uh, she's also very successful at cookbook uh, writing now too. And she has products at Target. She's done really well for herself. Anyway, 
I love her Instagram feed. It's really more of a behind the scenes of her lifestyle and she really takes it tongue in cheek and ends up being silly and very, very silly. And I love that about her. And she wears beautiful silky robes all the time. Now I realize she's not buying hers on Amazon for the $30 range, but still I can take my inspiration from anything I see throughout the world and apply it to what fits in my lifestyle. So this is very much inspired by my love of Chrissy Teigen's lifestyle. And so I just found a way to put it into my budget and my lifestyle. So I'm gonna feel a little more glamorous walking around the house in my new silky robe. Cause you all know that most of the time I wear my big uh, chunky robe, <laughs> which is leopard print, but that's the one that baby Bjorn likes to knead on. So what are you gonna do? Anyway, uh, hi Nikki, good morning, hi Donna. Does anybody have any questions for me, whether it's about anything I talked about or um, anything in general? Or if you wanna share what you've been working on. I've been working on this cardigan that I showed you. <clears throat> the back is done. Did it side to side, now I'm working on one of the fronts. I am going to try to do a little bit of a V-neck shaping in the front. So I'm starting from the outer side and then working in, and I'm going to do it in the same color uh, sequence that I did here. So the outside edges of the cardigan where the armholes will be are going to be navy. And then we work our way in with indigo, periwinkle, prints, and the center here will be in silver lavender. So that's the direction I'm making the whole cardigan. Kind of has like a type of a blue butterfly vibe to me. I don't know. And then I'm deciding whether or not I'm going to continue the color shading through the arms, or I think I might let the arms be the solid dark color from the edge here so that the striping color work is really only in the body and that as it gradients or color changes through to the side here. I think I'm going to pick up in that dark color and make the whole sleeve that dark color. I think it might get too busy if I go back through the striping again. So I think focusing on that color work in the center and making the sleeve solid might be a little less busy. Color work can be busy sometimes. What size hook am I using? I am using size um, five millimeter Tunisian crochet hook and my gauge after blocking is I think 3.25 millimeter, but I really don't feel like giving you too much information about the pattern at this moment. Number one, because I can't remember all the details off the top of my head, but also I'm still writing the pattern. So any information that you glean from me in the process may or may not end up being in the final pattern. So, um, How do I want to say this? You know, you, I don't want to be held to whatever I say casually as I'm still in the design process in regards to what the finished pattern will say. Uh, in the design process, things can be unraveled, things can be edited, things can be revised. There's no way to know what the final pattern is going to have in it. But in general, if you're looking to experiment with Tunisian crochet, I think that the five millimeter size for double crochet is giving me a rather nice fabric. It's a semi-solid fabric without being dense or stiff, and it's not too loose either. Keep in mind that uh, Tunisian crochet is definitely a more dense technique than regular crochet. So five millimeter would probably give you a loose fabric in regular uh, crochet, but in Tunisian crochet, it's giving you more of a dense fabric, maybe closer to what you would get in a four millimeter or something like that. Obviously, that's based on my gauge. Whatever sizes you use to achieve your gauge are, are the most important thing for you. Um, whatever, whenever a designer or a pattern says a certain size, it's a starting off point. You know, when you uh, start crocheting and you take your gauge swatch, you'll find that you may or may not use the same size hook to achieve the same gauge. The gauge is the priority, not the hook shown in a pattern. The hook shown in a pattern is a suggested size, a starting off point. The size that's necessary for you to achieve gauge is the priority. And that's usually not written specifically as a note or a disclaimer in patterns, but it should, especially for beginners. I'm drinking something new this week. 
I have decided to switch, and I never thought I'd do this. I switched to a Costco protein shake that comes prepackaged in the containers. Uh, and this is the, what is it called? It's the cafe latte flavor, which has the ca enough caffeine. It has the same amount of caffeine as one cup of coffee. It tastes like coffee. And it's a protein shake with 30 grams of protein. And the cases were $7 off this week at Costco. So I thought, what the heck, I'm going to give it a try. And I found that it's extremely convenient to grab one in the morning and just pop it and get my protein and my breakfast all in one fell swoop. Can you still hear the rain? It's getting a little heavier out there, so hopefully you can hear it. Nikki's working on a Mobius, a normal crochet. That's awesome. Oh, the rain sounds so nice. Mm. So you may or may not have joined me for my Create Zen video last night, which did not go as planned. If you watched, you saw that it didn't go as planned. I planted, uh, I planted my my uh, garden lights on stakes around my trees last night and i thought if i went live for a create zen video at sunset i could crochet and we could watch the sun go down turns out uh the lighting was too dark for crocheting and then it took forever for it to actually get dark from sunset and then I had forgotten to turn on the, I didn't know the lights needed to be turned on as well. So I ran outside, ran in the house to get a flashlight, then ran outside in the pitch dark, which you know I was terrified of snakes as I was doing it. I ran outside in the dark with a flashlight to go disassemble each light. I had to take the light off, find the switch on the bottom, then screw it back onto the stake and do that for all 12 of them in the dark. But I managed didn't scream, no snakes, didn't, I almost screamed at the end thinking something touched my foot, but it was a false alarm. Um, so really what that part went off without a hitch, but then the lights didn't really light up the trees as much as I wanted them to. They're more of like for, to show you the edges of a sidewalk. I don't think they're meant for lighting up trees, but I thought if I put them, tuck them inside the trees, it might work. So I'm gonna try again for tonight after the rain ends. But what I did do while we were waiting for it to get dark is showed everybody a little tour of my garden updates. And I know not everybody here watches, uh, watches the Zen videos. So I thought if you were interested, I could give you a quick update of my gardening uh, of my plants and show you what some of the updates of my plants this morning. Would anybody like to see that since we're out here? You know I want to show you my plants. I just need a couple of yeses so that I don't feel like I'm forcing anybody. So thanks, guys. I got a couple of yeses, so let's turn the camera around now. Okay, so my spider plant, the one that's been in my family for like four or five generations, is doing fantastic. Look at all those babies. It's just doing so well. And despite the fact that Bjorn and Be Becker chomp on the babies, it's still doing really, really well. So I'm happy about that. My 15-year-old orchid is still plugging along over there. It looks horrible when it's not blossoming, but I trust me, when the blossoms come back, there are no less than two dozen flowers on there. It's insane when that one comes back. Um, so remember the bougainvillea that was here and uh, growing into the screen and growing into the lanai? Well, I dug that one up the other day and I planted it over there between those two bougainvillea over there. So it's planted right there. And what's amazing is it's yellow. So I now have four, if it takes, I don't know if you can see it, it's very skinny. There's only like, it's right there. That's, see the hole where, see the spot where I dug it up? See the darker dirt? That's where I put potting soil on top of where I put it in. And so it's so tall that it, the top pieces are leaning into the tree. So fingers crossed that that takes. If it takes, I will then have four colors of bougainvillea represented in my yard. So let me back up again so I can show you how well my fern is doing. My fern is doing fantastic. It still looks like a big fireworks display. And then I bought some cat grass the other day for the kitties and they're enjoying that very much. I have a Vanda orchid. 
This is a beautiful purple with even a little texture on the purple petals. Isn't that gorgeous? So this one grows without dirt and without soil, without a pot, and the um, roots ended up, end up just growing in the air and they derive most of their moisture from the humidity in the air. It's looking absolutely fantastic. I love Vanda orchids. I think they are just exquisite. I think the roots are just as interesting as the plant. I just, I could stare at that for hours. I love them. Okay, I did buy some food at the uh, garden store this weekend. I bought mint and arugula. And what's funny is the mint has already taken over the pot. It's like only three days now, two days. And this came in a pot this big. Look at how big it spread itself out. Like I didn't do that. I put it in like that, same as I put the arugula in. So they've both kind of relaxed and taken over their spots, which is really encouraging that both pots were had compacted roots in there, which usually is a good sign that they're ready to be transplanted. And if this is any indication, I think, I think they could both be successful here. Here's my lemon tree that I planted from a seed. And you can see it's really is growing tall and strong, looks fantastic. I bought lemongrass at the store this weekend too. All of these herbs were like $3 and I already had the, the pots. Now Bjorn and Becker like to eat this one too, but I also love to make tea with uh, lemongrass and I like to use it for some sauces, but it's looking really good. I think if it gets really big, I may end up planting it in the ground. My two regular orchids, I don't know how to say the name, Felinopolis or something. I can't say the name. I'll have to look at it. Anyway, these two are looking great. So I originally bought these at the store and you can see we have, they were single plants. This one already, this one has grown a second plant with buds. And this one has grown two, this one has two stems of buds on the one stem so this has really grown dramatically since i bought it i'm trying to move it around and show the camera sorry so the tripod's getting in the way so then this one has also grown look at this started with a single um phalaenopsis thank you grace i knew if i saw it i could say it better and we have a second plant that has developed here so they're both doing exceptionally well and i'm very proud <laughs> my tripod. Anyway, and then here is my ivy, which I had in the house, and I didn't think it was doing that well in the house. Um, apparently, if it takes to this spot, it will grow so much over this plant stand that you won't actually see the plant stand. Now, I'm going to show you a couple things outside that I transplanted into the ground this weekend that um, I'm just going to point at because it's raining and I don't want to go out there. This is a pine. We bought it at Publix and ate the pineapple, but cut the top off and grew it in a pot for the last eight months. And I finally transplanted it into the ground. So I'm really excited that that will take off. Um, this is my gardenia bush. It got so big in the pot that I transplanted it into after I bought it that I felt like it probably needed to go in the ground and its roots were completely compacted in the big pot. So I'm excited that it's going to spread and get bigger now in the ground and then if you can see over there remember my original aloe vera that flowers that i had in a pot when i first moved in here uh well it grew so big in the pot that it was top heavy and kept falling over and it was in the biggest pot that i had so i planted it in the ground this week too so i'm hoping that that ends up growing massive as well so yeah and the only one I didn't mention was my plumeria. And as you can see, the plumeria is definitely off season. It's just the bare bones of the branches right now. But I did go for a bike ride recently and I saw some of my neighbors with plumeria have gotten a couple of leaves already. So it might not be long before I get leaves. And you remember the drill, we get leaves first. And then after we get the leaves, then we get those amazing flowers and then they last most of the summer and when i say summer i say that loosely florida has a very long summer and i feel like the plumeria really takes advantage of that for most of the year i will have leaves and regenerating flowers like i can't believe the productivity of that plant it grows flowers they they fall and then it grows new flowers right away 
Yes, I have heard that mint is very invasive as well. So we'll see if it ends up needing to be split from that pot with the arugula. If it takes over the pot, I'll move the arugula to another pot, but I'm very excited to start growing vegetables and I felt like a leafy green was a good place to start. So fingers crossed that I end up creating enough arugula that we can eat it and then from there yes virginia i wasn't a, uh i only learned about plumeria and frangipani i mean i know people call them the two different words i was only familiar with them from hawaii because that's what the hawaiian lays are made out of but when i found out that they grew here and especially when i found out that i had one in my backyard i felt like i won the gardening jackpot <laughs> i'm very excited to have it back here but yeah, I've got lots of fun plants, don't I? Oh, and um, I did put up some bird feeders for the kitties. I hung them on the fence around there. It's too rainy to go out there and show you. And so far we've seen squirrels and we've seen some migrating red cardinals and blue jays at the bird feeders. So that's been fun too. We do spend quite a bit of time out here. The kitties spend more time out here than I do, but uh, when the weather permits and when time permits, I do love to come out here and crochet. Uh, one thing in it, one thing I wanted to mention to you about these stripes on the cardigan, I don't know if you've noticed that the color separation between one color and the next is a little subtle on this design, and that's because when I do the forward pass of a color before switching to a next color, I do the return pass in the new color so that the two colors are blended together. See here? See how there's the vertical stripe of one color and then the return pass is in the separate color? I think by interlocking the two colors like that, you get a more subtle color change. And I'm gonna hold off a second and see if you guys understand what I'm saying. If you don't, I'll try to explain it again. I will be making tea with both my lemongrass and my mint over there. I love, oh, it reminds me, I have a new uh, orc, I have a new jasmine I wanted to show you guys too. Maybe we'll, hi Annette, good morning. You do understand Melanie or you do need me to explain it again? Same with Lisa, I don't recall if yes meant you understood or yes meant you wanted me to explain it again. So basically Tunisian crochet has a, a forward pass and a return pass, right? So you go across and pick up all your stitches, then on the return you take them all back off. Well, what I'm saying is that when I'm changing color, I do the forward pass in this the, the original color and then i do the return pass so picking up my new color and adding it on the left and doing the return in the new color and that's what gets the two colors overlocking i've been doing this technique for color work for years in fact in my first book wrapped in crochet the ruana in that wrapped in crochet book has even Tunisian simple stitch, it does color work that way. And when you do color work where you do the forward pass in a different color from the return pass, it ends up looking more woven than even knit or crocheted. It's a really interesting um, illusion. And it gives, you, it gives you the illusion of something far more complicated than it is. And so I've done it many times in uh, as a standalone color work technique. And so for this design, I thought it would be interesting to incorporate that with stripes just to make the stripes a little more subtle. So if I come closer, you can see the prints is the return pass inside the vertical stripe of the periwinkle. And you can even see it better here on the indigo to periwinkle. You can see you've got the vertical stripe of the original stitch here in indigo and that return patch or or those horizontal loops are done in the second color and you know you can't you can't tell that from back here but what you'll see is that if you were to compare this side by side with the same project done without that technique 
there would be a sharper line between the stripes. It softens the line between the stripes. So we were already trying to use colors that blend nicely together. So doing a blend mode between the color changes helps to really just amplify that subtlety of color stripe. So hopefully that makes sense now. Thank you, Barbara. I thought it blends nicely too. I'm still on the fence about doing some embroidery on the fabric before I'm done. And uh, I'm not, it would be optional, right? So those of you that wanted to learn a little embroidery could, and those of you that don't, you can leave it as just a striped cardigan. But I've got this little, you know, those little, those little voices on my shoulders. Add some embroidery to it. No, leave it alone. <laughs> But I think it might, and I was thinking that, and it was really because I was thinking about the colors of the year and the fact that gray and yellow are the colors of the year. I thought it might be fun to add a yellow flower and vine traveling up the center here. I don't know, something about just a little bit, little flowers and a little bit of vine I thought might be interesting. But um, yeah, it, it's just tooling around. It's, in my head, haven't decided if it's going to stick or not yet, but I have done some embroidery on knit and crochet wear before. Uh, spe specifically, the first one that comes to mind is the Tree of Life Ruana. You may rec remember that from my first knitting book, A Knitting Rhapsody, and I did a simple seed stitch Ruana, another Ruana, another brown Ruana actually, and I took green and uh, embroidered the Tree of Life on the back of it. Oh. I enjoyed making that so much. It's so beautiful. I do miss it. I obviously sold it at some point um, because I have to make room for more samples as time goes on. But man, I'm so proud of that design. I always love the fact that I combined embroidery with knitting. Um, little fun fact for you. I actually um, learned how to embroider and cross stitch and do needlepoint long before I picked up yarn and crochet hooks and knitting needles. When I was a kid, I used to buy embroidery and needlepoint kits at the craft store and I made um, things that you would hang on the wall. So I did, I think I did one with the Lord's Prayer with, um, uh, with what do you call it, with like embroidered flowers all around it. Like there's, I think it's called, there's needlepoint, there's cruel work and cross stitch, there's all sorts of things like that. So I did all sorts of combinations of those. And I loved that when I was a kid. And that was my first craft, I believe, unless you count drawing, because I used to draw evening gowns when I was a kid too. So I used to, I used to draw and design clothing when I was a kid, but I did, uh, but then I moved, oh, I did uh, latch rugs. What's the latch hook rugs? I tried that at one point but I definitely did a lot of cross stitch and needlepoint when I was a kid too. But it's funny, I didn't pick up, I didn't pick up yarn until I was pregnant. But I've always been creative and always been fooling around with stuff. Just, I didn't pick up uh, knitting hooks or, or knitting needles or crochet hooks until I was pregnant. And then I never let them go. <laughs> but I still like to make time for other crafts too. I love crafts of all kinds. I probably left my blanket out here. I wasn't sure if I was gonna need it this morning. It's pretty chilly out here. Uh, could really use some shoes. I came out here without shoes and my feet are frozen, but, and I'm a little cold, but I'll live. Yeah, I would definitely need glass. I need glasses for any crafting nowadays, though. But uh, crafting in those strong, uh, that strong light, like that bright tech light, I could still do embroidery with uh, with all of those tools, but not with just my plain eyes. Um, well, embroidery with uh, Beso Baby yarn would be much thicker and be done with a yarn needle. It would be much different than the original. Uh, than the original threads that we used too. So it would be much bigger and much easier to see, but I think we would still use the frame to get the fabric taut enough to do the stitch work on there. I think so, but I haven't uh, thought the idea all the way through yet. Um, Anna, if my hands ever hurt, I do exercises and I take breaks. I really do try to pay attention to uh, my body and anytime I feel 
pain or discomfort, I feel like it's definitely a good idea to take a break, but I also preempt, uh, uh, preemptively, no. I try to make a point to get up and take breaks so that I don't have issues. So anytime you're worried about spending too much time knitting and crocheting and sitting and being focused, set a timer on your phone, set a timer in the kitchen, just set a timer so that you um, rem have reminders to get up and take a break. Go for a walk, even if it's just walking around the house, shake out your hands, even do some self-massage to your fingers with some nice cream. That helps anything to get that blood flowing and moving and warming up those joints. But any amount of stretching or walking around for your feet, uh, I'm reading feet here, uh, for your, your back and your body is good too really is good to take care of those things. And the, the better prepared you are, the more you can knit and crochet. I do believe that because I spend lots and lots of time knitting and crocheting and I make a point to make sure that I'm taking care of my body so that I can sit for extended periods of time. So getting up and taking breaks and rubbing your hands. Um, yeah, Anna, if you have really bad pain in both thumbs, you might want to go see a doctor. When it's minor, there are mi things that you can do to help minor pain. But if you have, if you're describing it as very bad pain, I would definitely consider going to the doctor for that. I don't know if I can help you with very bad pain. Uh, yes, I will not forget to post that sugar scrub recipe, Joe. I definitely will. Um, because the website is in transition right now, I don't know if it makes sense to do a blog post. We're hopefully close to the, uh, hopefully close to a launch date now for the new website. So I'm trying to stall on adding new content to the old one because it will have to get moved over. So I think it makes more sense to add the recipe right to the video description for beauty blog number two, but I will be sharing that later today. Uh, also, what was I going to say? And then when the, when the new website comes out, I will talk more extensively about it because there's lots of ways you can um, modify it for different reasons too. But I will share the base recipe that is good enough for doing the lip exfoliation like I showed you how to do on the beauty blog number two this morning and also for exfoliating any part of your body you want. But it is safe enough for your face and your lips, which is what I showed you this morning. Uh, what else was I gonna say? Oh, uh, another quick reminder about the website. If you have not saved your digital products or your order history, please uh, go ahead and do that. If that's important to you, please save them all before the website changes because we are going to a completely different website and all of the information from the old one will not be transferring in that respect. So make sure that you save any of your order history if you want to have that. When you log, you'll be re-logging into the new website and creating a brand new account. So the history will be gone from the old one. Um, we're going to have lots of exciting things with new accounts on the new website. It's going to be so awesome and you're going to love it. Uh, but the downside is in order to create something so much better, we have to let go of the past. Hey, there's great advice right there. <laughs> in order to look ahead to the future, we got to let go of the past sometimes too, right? Uh, I definitely, I sometimes we just, oh, I needed to hear that today. Hopefully someone else needed to hear that today. If you want to focus on the future, you got to let go of the past. Thanks so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed my show and tell, my little tips and tricks on color chains and Tunisian crochet. I hope you enjoyed my the tour of my garden. You know how proud I am of my baby plants. They are my babies too. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye-bye.